Well, hello again and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about my first impressions of the GFX 100S. It's a medium format mirrorless camera from Fujifilm. A friend of mine named Abdo, um, he's also a, a, a very talented printer. Uh, I'll leave uh, his uh, contact here in the description of this video. Uh, he does um, most of my fine art prints, so he's very, very good at it. Uh, he recently bought a medium format mirrorless camera, the Fujifilm GFX 100S. It's a 100 megapixels um, medium format, so the, the, the sensor size is bigger than a full frame camera. And I was considering, if you take a look first at this video here, I was considering um, a medium format camera instead of my uh, full frame camera. Um, I, I own a 5D Mark IV from Canon and uh, very soon, as at some point, I will have to update my gear, uh, my camera. Um, and I'm considering some options. I'm not saying that I will move to medium format, but I'm just uh, testing out some equipment. And since he told me that he, he was with uh, a medium format mirrorless camera and I said to him, why not? Let's try it out. And I went to his studio um, and uh, he showed me a little bit about how the camera works and the possibilities. And it is very, very different from uh, the commons, the menus, it's all different from what I'm used to Canon. Uh, I'm used to this brand, Canon, for about, I don't know, maybe 18 years now. So it's, it's very complicated to change your mindset. It's not a heavy camera, it's uh, about the same weight as the 5D Mark IV. Uh, of course, the lens uh, the lenses system is uh, all the medium format lenses are heavier than full frame and even heavier than uh, APS-C uh, lenses. But overall, I didn't feel much a uh, big difference in weight. And I know that technology will advance and go further and reduce even more uh, the camera weight. That wasn't a big issue for me. We tested with uh, one lens, it was the GF um, 20 35 millimeters, which is equivalent to 16 or 17 millimeters uh, up to 30 millimeters, uh, 28 millimeters on a full frame camera. And I was really, really impressed with the image quality that this camera brings. This camera is aimed, I think, for um, architectural photography, landscape photography, studio work. It's a slow camera, so it is basically a camera most of the time to use on a tripod. It's a camera that fits on my kind of work. Do I need 100 megapixels? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think so. I think that maybe uh, half of that, that would be okay for me, for my kind of work and for the print size that I'm uh, used to. So after some brief explanation on his studio, uh, we went together to uh, a park here in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, and we went uh, outdoors to uh, make some uh, test shots. And now, uh, let's take a look at some of these shots I made. The first photo I took was uh, from this um, set of trees here in the park. Uh, first, uh, take a look at this. 8,736 by 11,648 pixels. So this is 100 megapixels. It's huge. It's a file. It's a very big file. Um, the raw file is .raf um, and 
Uh, I made some f few adjustments here, like an exposure. Uh, and also I kept the camera Velvia Vid, Vivid uh, profile from um, the original um, camera profile, so I didn't change that. Uh, other than that, lens correction, so uh, it identified as a Fuji GF 2035F4, okay? Um, F4 on a medium format camera is equivalent to F2.8 uh, in a um, uh, full frame camera, okay? So medium format is always, uh, uh, for the same aperture, it has a shallower depth of, depth of field. So it's not, uh, it's not uncommon if you, you're using, uh, for example, if you're using F8 on a few full frame camera to get the same uh, about the same uh, depth of field, you would use an F11 or uh, on a medium format camera. It, it's the same concept as uh, you move from full frame to APS-C sensor size, okay? So, uh, now take a look. I will just, uh, okay, let's take a look here. Uh, I will zoom in 100%. So you can see some trees here. Uh, this shot was made with ISO 1600. But why a high ISO? Because I wanted to explore the noise with this ISO. 35 millimeter, uh, f11, one to 200 of a second. Okay, so I will zoom in on this uh, tree here. Now take a look at that. This is so impressive, so really, really impressive. Take a look at the detail level. It's, it's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. So I will zoom out and um, there are some people here uh, and I will zoom in in one of them. They're really, really tiny here. But as I zoom in, remember, this is 35 millimeter equivalent to 28 millimeter on a full frame camera. If I zoom in here, whoa, just whoa. You can see details on the clothes, on the people clothes. Look at that. You can see his headphone. Now, if I zoom out, can you? It's uh, it, it's bizarre. I mean, it's really bizarre. This this the neat level of detail, okay? But the first uh, the the number one reason that I wanted to try it out was for long exposure photography. As you know, I love to shoot long exposure photography, and I'm uh, for most of my work, um, I'm looking for a camera that can. Uh, hold up the noise really well. So these um, medium format sensors, they are bigger than the full frame sensors. So they produce less noise. And that's the test that I did here. You can also check on this, uh, on this video here, okay? Uh, so I made a couple of shots here from uh, one, two, three, four, five shots. So the first shot, it's unedited, okay? Again, I will zoom in 100%. You can see details on the windows. Uh, just a, 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 a side note here, it's 35 millimeter, okay? I didn't went to 20 millimeters. This was uh, also to check uh, a little bit about depth of field and how uh, that would behave. Again, uh, for example, here I, I shot at F16. Let me just go here quickly on auto because here the clouds were uh, blown up and I also had some uh, uh, some blacks here. So this was uh, ISO 100, 45 millimeter, F16 and one to, one to uh, 45 of a second. So if I go here on auto tone, let's see how uh, the camera recovered the shadows. Look at that. Of course, it's ISO 100 and it's not long exposure, but it renders pretty well the colors that were in completely dark. If I 
undo the auto settings, you can see that sometimes in places where uh, it was completely black, like here, it does a pretty decent job of showing the details and almost no noise. I'm really impressed with this camera. So, um, other than that, I put some filters. So I just go here also on auto. This is uh, the same settings, but with uh, one uh, two minute exposure, 120, uh, 120 seconds, okay? So I'll go here on auto. And here, there was something that we were struggling at first, because if you take a look here, it looks blurry. But why is blurry? Because we forgot to turn off the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization on this camera. So you can shoot long exposure with the in-body image stabilization turned on. You need to turn it off. Okay. Uh, another point is that I turned off the long exposure noise reduction for this camera. Uh, so after fixing that, I made another shot with the exactly same settings. Let's put on auto here. And again, if I zoom in here, you can see it's pretty good. There are some dead pixels, yes, if you look at here. But as you know, I lift up the shadows and there's no noise. I mean, this is not noise. This is a hot pixel. It's different from long exposure noise. I can just click here and eliminate those points. But the overall image has a very, very good quality. I'm really impressed with that. As you can see here, there's also some uh, hot pixels here. Uh, this is a two minute exposure and the camera was already uh, warmed up. Okay, after very, uh, Lots of photographs that I took. The next photo I did with uh, one second, about one second. So again, there's almost no noise. Okay. And pretty good image quality as well. And lastly, I did an extreme long exposure for 800 seconds. This is about 12-minute exposure, maybe 13 minutes of exposure. It's very extreme. Uh, so again, the blacks and the highlights. So I expose it to the highlights. This is on purpose. This is to make an extreme situation. So if I go here on auto, uh, let's take a look on the brighter areas. It's practically zero noise. Now on the shadowed areas, yeah, you can see a little bit of noise, but the, the hot pixels are here. Look again, the hot pixels. So I, I haven't done any work on the noise in this yet. Okay. Uh, but the noise is pretty acceptable, even at 800 seconds, which is really extreme. If I go here on detail and run a denoise, it will probably get rid of this stuff. And uh, comparing with the 5D Mark IV with my full frame camera, uh, the overall uh, noise is better than the 5D Mark IV. So I'm pretty happy with the results that this camera provided. Uh, of course, <laughs> it's a very expensive camera at the moment of this video. Uh, I'll leave the price here. It's 2023. <laughs> And uh, sometimes there, there are rebates on B&H, on uh, Amazon. Uh, but I think that uh, this camera is not, for every, is not for everyone. Okay, this is... Um, it, it, moving to medium format, it's a very uh, complex... It's a big step. I mean, you have to 
worry about lenses. This is not a camera for wildlife, okay? It's, it's a slow camera. You would lose the moment if you were chasing an animal, for example. But for, for nature, for a landscape photography, it's ideal. Uh, for long exposure photography, it's really, really good. Uh, I really enjoyed my time with this camera. It was a short time, but uh, I learned a lot. Am I going to buy it? No, not now. Um, I don't know in the future, but right now uh, it's a very, very expensive camera and I'm not buying it yet. This is a, a really a quick video about my impressions of the GFX 100S. Uh, really, really enjoyed this camera. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you on the next video.